In this video, I'm gonna showcase my first ever Hello World uh, application with the SDS2.NET API. We're gonna take some members that were modeled in SDS2 and we're going to automatically import those over into Tecla Structures. And I'm gonna do this with my own WinForms application here that I've created with both the SDS2 and the Tecla APIs. Uh, I'm really excited to show you guys today my first Hello World application on the SDS2.NET API. Um, and uh, it's been about 15 years. Uh, yeah, I think about that long since I've actually gotten into SDS2 and done some modeling. So it's been a while. Um, but check this out. I've got uh, some columns in here. There are different rotations. I've got the size set. Um, and then I also have like some beams and, um, basically on the beams, you see that I can, uh, that I've set the camber here. So if I actually open up the member dialog box, uh, we can see that I have set this to composite. I've set the number of studs, I set, uh, the camber here on the beam. Um, and then basically there's the elevation, the material grade, and I'm going to have this data come across here over into Tecla structures. And then here's the profile. So um, then also I have the end reactions um, that are calculated by SDS2 uh, based on the UDL for this member. Um, I'm gonna bring those across into Tecla structures as well. So let's go take a look. All right, so here I am rocking my WinForms application. Yes, I said it, WinForms application, because uh, I started on .NET 1.1 and I'm still addicted to WinForms uh, just because it's easy to use on really basic applications. So here we go. All right, so I'm gonna fire this up into debug mode and let me just uh, take a pause here for a second and just say how cool this is that SDS2's .NET API allows totally external applications to just connect with an open session of, of SDS2 and I'm also connecting to the Tecla API in open session of Tecla. This is a pretty, a pretty big game changer compared to running like old school uh, Python parametrics or components and, and stuff within SDS2. So this is great that an external application can communicate data, uh, you know, uh, fetching and reading information as well as inserting members. Um, and this just opens up a whole world of opportunity uh, and fully leveraging the .NET environment and doing exchanges and things like that. So just wanted to comment on that. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the SDS2 to Tecla button. It's gonna actually go through, connect to SDS2, get the member data, hold it in memory, and then I will just instantiate and uh, insert all of my Tecla objects matching the properties that I want to. So there we go, first Hello World application, took about three seconds for the exchange to happen. And so I'm just gonna close out and let's just walk through some of the properties. We can see that the column rotation kicked in here. Right, and so there we go, we've got it rotated at back where these are rotated at top with zero degrees. On the beams, we actually have some user-defined attributes that have been set. Um, so you can see the, the profile, the material grade, everything has been set here. Um, and then on the parameters tab, I have the camber, which came across. And so these are some of the mapping things that you've got to do, like the camber here is three quarter of an inch, uh, but it says 0 0.75. So camber in SDS2 is an actual, like uh, a double value, whereas camber in Tecla is a string. And so I would actually type three slash four there for three quarter. So you might have to write some conversion routines for that. But I got the piece mark. I've got the GUID, which this is super cool because if I wanted to do sort of like a change management routine or a round tripping or something like that, I could essentially use the GUID from SDS2 and uh, track that this was authored in an external application from Tecla. And then if I was doing a, a modified uh, import, I could find these objects first in Tecla and then just do a change of properties and an update rather than like, you know, doing a whole insertion and doubling up materials. Um, and connections, I brought in the shear reactions here. Um, so in STS2, it was in uh, KIPS, and I just had to do a conversion to Newtons, which is how it's stored in Tecla. Then I had uh, the field stud uh, count here, which is just an integer, so everything looks pretty good. So I was even trying to bring in some connection data, like a little bit more data, but I, I haven't quite figured out how to get that from the member end yet in STS2. Um, but here, this is pretty easy and pretty basic. So I'm gonna quickly go through the code and just show the very fundamental basics of kind of what I did to, so you can get a glimpse of just how easy it is to, to sort of exchange data. All right, so in the code itself, uh, do not do this at home. I was just really keeping this quick, but I actually wrote my business logic and code right in the UI. Don't do that, that's no good. I wouldn't normally do this, but um, this is just to kind of show you here. I went right to this button event and I started doing my doing my magic. Now up in the constructor, I did have to do a couple things. So let me actually start there. Um, underneath uh, kind of the main form entry point here, I, I did the, the whole is, 
you know, there's this linker that you have to call um, to, to, you know, connect with um, SDS2 and find the right version. So you do this first, and if that returns a, a true when I come down here, um, or if it doesn't, then I'm killing the application and exiting because I shouldn't really be able to do anything here if I if SDS2 or Tecla isn't open, et cetera. So I've got a little bit of code in there just to test that out and see how that would work. Um, and if it was linked or connected, um, I found out that uh, this uh, there was an exception thrown when I tried to actually open the job um, and find the job. Uh, not find the job, but open. And so uh, I actually had to add this string in here. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what this does, but I had to put this in before I did the whole open job, which will, um, and I passed default, which I hope is the current model. It seems like it is the current model um, or the last open model. And so um, it looks like it's not reloading when I call the open, which is good because I didn't want it to do that. I just kind of wanted it to use the current session. Um, so I think that's what's happening. But basically, this is kind of like the, hey, I'm connecting to the SDS2 and I'm trying to open up the, the a certain job or I'm connecting to uh, the job that is currently open. That was the intent there. Then I'm doing the same thing with Tecla Structure. So here I'm just instantiating a new model. Um, this is a little bit confusing for all new Tecla API developers. are like, hey, is this creating a new model? No, it's just creating a connection. And then I can just check this Boolean value to see if I'm connected. If not, I'll exit. All right, so back down to the code. So I've just got the date time here to check, you know, to see how long this took. Um, I've got my conversion values for units. And then I'm just uh, sending a prompt over to Tecla Structures on the display prompt here just uh, so that way I can keep track, hey, this is working and know when it's done. Um, and so since this is an export from SDS2, what I'm doing is I'm going to iterate through all the members um, in SDS2 in memory. And so you have this member uh, handle list. And so from the job, you get the members and then you go through all those member handles. And uh, again, I'm just, th this is my first Hello World application. So I believe that there's a, the member handle, like uh, you can do a couple things. There's a lightweight way to get like a kind of top level property data. Um, and then there's a deeper member handle, which gets like deeper information um, about the members and uh, allows you to have access to some other methods and certain things like that. And so I did the deeper one um, and there's a little bit more of a performance, like, you know, kind of uh, marker on that. But uh, for what I was trying to do, I actually wanted to see everything, the full-fledged members, so that way I'd have everything accessible for the, the export. So you can pause the video if you'd like and just take a look at the code. I tried to zoom in so you can see it pretty well on the video uh, when you're watching it. But you know, essentially, I'm in, I've got the SDS2 member and I'm getting that from the iterator, right? From the member handles uh, iterator. And then I'm instantiating a new Tecla structures beam. And then pretty much I'm setting the Tecla Beams properties based on the SDS2 member. So, you know, you just got to kind of figure out what does is, what, is what mean in one software to another. So section size and then profile string, you know, grade name and then material string. Um, the, the, the member description in SDS2 is the name of the member or the part over in Tecla structures. Uh, one other fundamental difference between Tecla and SDS2 is that uh, SDS2 has this concept of a member. Um, and then there's materials that are sort of added to a member. Whereas in Tecla, everything is a part. Um, so there's parts and then there's just an assembly level object, but there's not really a member object. It's, it's an assembly and assemblies happen when you shop weld or shop bolt or attach uh, pieces kind of uh, together to form an assembly. And so the, the concept's a little bit different. So that's something, you know, you just gotta kind of understand when you're doing this exchange. Um, you know, but then here I've got basically the start point. So uh, you can get SDS2 member ends or, or there's a left and a right. So there's a couple of different ways it looks like to get to end data. You can get this uh, list here basically and just pass the index of zero for left and uh, one for right, I believe, and basically get the data. I did have to convert this, uh, you know, from, from inches to millimeters uh, for Tecla. Um, so from SDS2 to Tecla. And again, there's the start and the end point, right? So here's the primary properties that I needed uh, so that way I could actually insert the thing into Tecla without it throwing an exception um, and doing everything right. And then I have the start and the end point. And then I actually call the insertion here. And uh, in Tecla, you have to actually insert an object first before you can set user defined attributes. So that's what I did. And then I took the, uh, you know, the SDS2 piece mark here and I wrote it. And then I took the SDS2 GUID and I wrote it to these Tecla user defined attribute variables here. Now, uh, the next thing I was doing is I was testing some casting and I, you know, there's a couple different ways it looks like to do this. 
Um, in Tecla, most people will do a cast uh, to check whether the selected object is the type that they want, like a beam, a column, a plate, or whatever. Um, in SDS2, it looks like you can do the same thing because everything inherits from, like on members, it inherits from the core class of member and then beam, column, and all that kind of, you know, are specialty classes that sort of inherit from the, the master class or the base class of member. And so I use casting to kind of do some specific code that's uh, for column member types versus beams. Now there is a get um, there is a get member type, and so when you're actually going through the member handle, you might you might do a lightweight just check of hey, and if you're just trying to do columns or beams or whatever, you can do that check at a lightweight first, so that way it's not as heavy um, potentially as casting. So I have to do some time studies on this, but um, yeah, from there basically what I did is on columns, you know, I was just setting the rotation right, because and I was setting that in Tecla that the the part uh, insertion point needs to be centered um, on that insertion point. And this is a little bit trashy here because I did a modify after. This is like a performance killer here, but uh, you know it's example code. So I would have done this before I actually inserted the code uh, or the column in the model. Uh, and then if it's a beam, if it casts uh, as true as a beam and it's not null, um, then essentially here I was looking for the camber data, right? And if it, if it was this type of camber input over in the SDS2 member, um, then I would just set that value there. Uh, then here I'm reading the uh, shear and reactions on the left and right. So left in SDS2 means start point in Tecla. Right means magenta endpoint in Tecla. Um, so right in SDS2. And I did have to convert that from kips to newtons. And then the last thing was just really setting the number of studs, um, UDA. And that's just an integer. So that maps perfectly. And then in Tecla, after everything has been inserted, I committed the changes, uh, put a display prompt, and there we go. That shows you how the code works for this SDS2 to Tecla Structures Hello World application. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.